Now, let me show you how the map mode functions. This is the front page in the map mode, as I showed you earlier. At the left edge of this page, you see plus and minus. Press plus, and boom! You can zoom in on the map. Press minus to zoom out, just like this. You can place your cursor over here, to scroll the map at the same time. So you can zoom in, zoom out and scroll to focus easily on the nation, area, city, town or village you want to see. Let's see how it works. Zoom in on this area, somewhere in Asia, just for the sake of it. Let's see. So we are in Asia. You can see an area of Asia including Japan. That's what you see here, right? These colors indicate the temperature rise levels. Each color represents a certain temperature rise level. To indicate how much temperature rise is being predicted in any given area on the map. You have a selection available here, such as the emission scenarios of the greenhouse gas emission and the climate models used for prediction. Aside from the temperature rise, we have a variety of choices available, including precipitation changes. You can make a selection at the bar on the left here, in this particular strip. From the top, scenario, climate model, Variable, period, monthly, and calculation. Scenario on the top is about the emission scenarios. You can select greenhouse gas emission scenarios. Climocast stores the data in four emission scenarios. Here is what we call SSP 126. SSP stands for Shared Social Economic Pathway. You can select SSP-126, which is the scenario with the least amount of greenhouse gas emission. Or, you can select SSP-370, the scenario in which the greenhouse gas emission grows to a very high level at the end of this century. Below scenario, you see climate model. There is a variety of climate models, developed by various laboratories and universities around the world, and the predicted changes of temperature and precipitation vary accordingly. Climocast houses 10 worldwide selections of climate models. What you see on the screen right now is the climate model called Miroc 6. It shows the predicted values based on this particular climate model developed by Japanese laboratories and universities. Now let's see what happens if you change it to UK ESM, for instance. And, as you can see, the colors are slightly different from what we just saw using Miroc 6. It enables you to grasp instantly how different the predicted values can be, depending on the different climate models you use. Now you see a map showing the temperature changes. We have several other variables stored in Climocast. Temperature. I told you earlier that these colors represent the levels of temperature rise. Right here, it's kind of tiny, but you can see which color represents, what level of temperature rise. For example, here. The darker the red becomes, the higher the level of temperature rise is. And the lighter the red becomes, the lower the level of temperature rise is. That's how it works. Let's take a look at this map. This is where Indonesia is located near the equator, for instance. The color is lighter than the northern part, 
with Japan and China in it, indicating lower temperature rise level here, and in the north, higher. The color difference tells you how much temperature rise is predicted in each country. I told you earlier that there are other variables stored in variable. Aside from the temperature rise, highest temperature changes, lowest temperature changes and precipitation changes are stored in Climocast. Let's see what precipitation changes can show you. You can clearly see that the colors are very different from what we saw in the temperature rise context. Regarding the precipitation changes, as you can see in this color bar, a certain color is associated with a certain level of precipitation change. The bluer it gets, the higher the precipitation level is. The redder it gets, the lower the precipitation level is in the given area. Let's have a look at this chart, for example. It's colored red around Thailand, so you can tell that the precipitation level is predicted to get lower. In the Indonesia area here, the color tells you that the precipitation level is predicted to rise. Then, we have the highest and the lowest temperatures as well. Let's change it to temperature for now. We have some other setups available. We have a setup called period. Period shows the average temperature rise in the selected period of time, from 2051 to 2060 in this case. You can change it. For example, if you need the values from 2091, the end of the century, to 2100, just change period to 2091 to 2100. And then the picture changes drastically. The map is in darker red in most areas now, indicating that the level of the temperature rise is predicted to go higher. That's what you can tell from this tool in the map mode. Regarding period, you can set it up for an increment of 10 years. Or, click on decade to see the picture of 10 years later. Click on yearly, and you see the data of any one year. What you see here is the data of 2091 alone. Or, if you want to find out about a certain year, say, 2050, you can set it up for 2050. And you can see the temperature rise prediction for 2050. Or, if you want to find out how much the highest temperature will rise in a certain month, say, in August. Find this square of monthly, and check mark on it. You can choose any month of the year, from January, February, March, etc. to December. So, if you want to know about August, select August. For example, if you want to see the highest temperature in August, change this variable to maximum temperature. And you see the highest temperature in August 2050, predicted according to the British Climate Model UK ESM. Here it is. The last setup at the bottom is calculation. You have ratio and difference here. It shows how much the temperature rise and precipitation have changed between 1981 and 2000, at the end of the last century. If you want to see the difference, select difference. Or, if you want to see the ratio, select ratio. Now, this is about temperature. At the moment, it is set for maximum temperature. In case of temperature, select difference. It would be good to see the difference in temperature from the end of the last century. In case of precipitation, ratio would be a better choice, rather than going by absolute values, because it would be easier to grasp the regional precipitation changes by comparison. 
absolute values of precipitation are very different region to region, so it would make better sense to see the ratio rather than the difference. So, I would recommend selecting ratio for precipitation, and difference for temperature, the highest and lowest temperatures. Lastly, use CCSV download here. We're in the map mode. The data based on the selected scenario, climate model, variable, period, etc. is only a click away. You can download CSV data with one click. It means that you can get the data you want instantly with one click very easily. Now, let's see how other maps work. In the color bar we saw all along, you can see which color represents which temperature rise and precipitation level. And here, where I demonstrated zoom in and zoom out earlier, there is a button just below it. By pressing this, you can toggle the color bar on and off. Also, there are a few buttons on this white strip. Find divide maps here. It is set for times 1 right now. It means that it's set to show one map on the screen. Change it to times 2 like this and you can show two maps on the screen at the same time. This screen division function can be very helpful. In case you have SSP scenarios 126 and 370. For instance, and you want to compare the emission scenarios of the low greenhouse gas emission and the high greenhouse gas emission, the temperature rise levels, you will find this screen division function very useful to understand the difference. When you are in a different place like now, you may think that you have to zoom in and out manually, but that's not the case. Find sync position right next to divide maps. Check mark here and, like so, the two sections synchronize to automatically show the exact same location. You can choose a climate model for any climate scenario, emission scenario. Let me show you how. On the left, for instance, select SSP 126 that represents low greenhouse gas emission. Select Japanese climate model Miroc and select temperature, like so. Let's see, for example, from 2051 to 2060, and difference. The image on the left now reflects the temperature prediction for 2051 to 2060 by the Japanese climate model Miroc, based on a low emission scenario SSP-126, to show the difference from the end of the last century. Let's set up the image on the right now. Select SSP-370, Miroc, temperature, between the years 2051 and 2060, and difference. It may be a bit hard to tell at a glance, Compare these two images to see the slightly different color representation. Particularly here, which is Russia. The color is darker in Russia. The area is in darker red, which clearly indicates that the temperature rise will be higher here in this high emission scenario. What we just saw were the images in different emission scenarios. Now let's see how it works with different climate models. Let's see. Reset this for 370, for instance. Now the two images are the same, right? If you want to know the difference between Miroc, a Japanese climate model, and UKESM developed by the UK, here you are. 
The difference is so obvious in color, isn't it? In this case, the Miroc version of the prediction shows the temperature rise like this. And on the right, which is the UK version, the prediction looks like this. You can see by comparing the two, that the predicted temperature rise can vary greatly depending on the model. Now, you've seen the screen split in two. Climocast can be split up to four screens. Just like this. Let's see. There are four emission scenarios available using Miroc. So you may want to see all four of them at the same time. Or, let's say, 370, Miroc, temperature rise, from the year 2001 to the year 2010. Now, the upper left image represents the values in the high greenhouse gas emission scenario, SSP 370, from 2001 to 2010. And this one is about the year 2031, also by Miroc. This one is, say, 2071, Miroc, 370. And this one is about the end of this century, 2091 to 2100. Now you have four images representing four different time frames, based on the same emission scenario and the same climate model. It goes from left to right. The upper left, 2001 to 2010. The upper right, 2031 to 2040. The lower left, 2071 to 2080. And the lower right, 2091 to 2100, the end of this century. The color difference clearly shows that the temperature rise will increase in the future. The color grows darker and darker with time. 2024. By comparing different time frames, you can easily tell the transition of the temperature values. Being able to see up to four different images to compare helps you understand how the temperature changes happen. Next, I would like to introduce you to other functions available in the map mode in Climocast. Let's see what they are like. To focus on a location, one way to do it is to zoom in, zoom out and scroll on the map, just as we have done up till now. You can also zoom in on a location by selecting a nation, prefecture slash state slash province, city, town or village. Here in the strip on top of the screen, you can find area setting. Right now, you can see level 0 is active, and it's set for global now. From this drop-down menu, you can select any nation to zoom in right on it. Let's see, for instance, select Nepal and see what happens. Select Nepal, and Nepal alone lights up in color on the map. It's at the edge of the map as is. Find the zoom button up here. And click on it. You can zoom in on the location of Nepal. This way, you can compare the temperature change data per nation, based on the same settings of SSP 370, high emission scenario, Miroc, temperature, the years 2001, 2031, 2071, and 2091. Now, you may want to narrow down the area closer. Find level 1 here. And check mark on level 1. Then, you can see the necessary info, the temperature differences in this case, in the smaller administrative divisions of your choice. Take an example, at the lower right, SSP 370, 2091 to 2100. In this case, the temperature rises higher in the western regions. And in the eastern part, the temperature rises lower. It is very clear to see. 
If you want to narrow it down closer. In level 1, it is set up for all right now, which means that you see all the administrative divisions on the level right below the nation. So, if you need to narrow it down further, you can select any certain administrative division of that level. Select Central, for instance. Then the central area of Nepal lights up in color. You can press zoom here. Or you can check mark on the next level. And you can focus on the location of your choice, like so. Now, in level 2, it's set up for all. So, what you see here now is the location called Central, in Nepal, with its administrative divisions colored separately, just like this. As an example, select Bhagmati, the province in which Nepal's capital Kathmandu is located. First, you have this nation Nepal. Narrow it down to the next level of administrative divisions in level 1, and then go further into smaller units to focus eventually on Bogmati with Kathmandu in it. So what you see here is the temperature rise comparison in Bogmati province. Press zoom button here to focus on the area. So, for comparison at a glance, we have four images here on the screen, each of which showing the temperature rise in a certain time frame. If you want to use these images on your reports, etc., you are free to capture them for your own use. No problem. So, this is how I hope you will use these maps. Now, I would like to move on to the introduction of the chart mode. The chart mode is different from the map mode we saw earlier in which the temperature rises and or precipitation changes are shown on maps. The chart mode shows the temperature and precipitation changes in time sequence.